The conservative chief justice of the Wisconsin Supreme Court is accusing her liberal colleagues of staging a coup. Liberals gained a majority on the court earlier this month after more than a decade of conservative control. So for more on this, I want to bring in Matt DeFore. He's the State House Bureau Chief at Wisconsin Watch. Okay, thanks for joining us. So we just kind of, what, the, the, what we read was <laughs> we very the, brief. The, ba the so, basics. Right. So we need to <laughs> explain, because even I had to kind of like read the article several times. Walk us through what happened, who was fired or let go, and why the Chief Justice is making these accusations. Right. So thanks so much for having me on. On August 1st, the liberal uh, majority took over for the first time uh, on the Wisconsin Supreme Court in 15 years. And one of the first things they did uh, on that first day was to let go the administrator of the courts, uh, a gentleman by the name of Randy Koshnick, who had been there for about six years. Uh, he previously had run against uh, a liberal longtime justice, Shirley Abramson, uh, for the Supreme Court. And uh, some believe that politics played a big role in why he was let go, that these new majority uh, justices did not trust him. But that set off a, a very chaotic first week for the Supreme Court, where there were accusations uh, of uh, just all kinds of uh, back dealing and, and underhanded tactics by the liberal majority, by the conservatives. They seem to be challenging them at every turn about what kind of procedures they're using. And by the end of that first week, they created a, a new administrative committee that would essentially uh, bigfoot the chief justice uh, on, on, on setting lots of different things for the court, like the schedule for upcoming cases uh, and, and different personnel matters. And so they've essentially stripped her of her powers. So I just want to sort of get clarification. Did the state court director basically answer to the, the sort of chief justice? And then now we have kind of a panel that replaces that person. So it's a little bit of more of a, I guess, democratic, I suppose. Is that what it is? Well, some important context. The chief justice was reelected back in May, one month after the liberals uh, had secured that four justice majority, which began in August. And so that was viewed at the time as a little bit of a, a maneuver by the conservatives to keep in power the chief justice. So this is sort of the uh, the return uh, serve, Ooh. if you will, on on the from the liberals, essentially hamstringing her power by creating this three judge panel. Uh, to, to handle administrative matters. So it's, it's, it's again, it's a, it's a tennis match here. It's a tennis match. It almost sounds a little inside baseball, you yeah, know, when I know. you're talking about all this stuff. But it's important because, obviously, there's a number of issues that the justices have to take up. Um, can you walk us through the impact when it comes to that? Because, you know, with all this different moving around and now yeah. other people in power, you know, what, what are we really, what, what are the people of Wisconsin looking at potentially happening? So there are two major cases coming through the Wisconsin Supreme Court right now. One uh, obviously has to do with abortion rights. Wisconsin has been under an 1849 abortion law since the Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade. And the election in April was very much seen as a referendum on that issue, that people in the state uh, would like to see the Supreme Court weigh in on that question. Uh, but the I think the other one that's more significant is the redistricting lawsuits. There's several now coming through uh, the court system. And the Republicans in Wisconsin and have held the legislature for more than a decade. Uh, many view those maps uh, as uh, unfair, including the uh, the new Supreme Court Justice <laughs> Janet Prosewitz. And so there's a lot of back and forth about uh, whether she should be allowed to rule on that case. But a lot of this back and forth and the, the you know this accusation of a coup and the attempt to slow things down or speed things up. A lot of that, I think, does go back to this case where they're trying to uh, decide whether the re Republican legislative maps are constitutional or not. Well, so, it, no, go I ahead. was going to say, where does it go from here? Yeah. I mean, if the, if, the, if the top court in the state is fighting amongst themselves, then who's above that? Uh, in this, in Wisconsin, uh, really no one. This is something they'd have to resolve for themselves. I mean, we've had conflicts like this amongst justices for more than a decade. There was an incident uh, about a decade ago where there was a justice who uh, laid his hands on the uh, neck of another justice, Yikes. which national headlines. Yeah. Um, the conservatives and liberals, they don't get along in the uh, national <laughs> politics, and they are not getting along, as so it seems right now, on this Wisconsin Supreme Court. Well, and just really quickly, I, the, the whole reason that this flip from conservative to liberal is because, really, of the abortion issue, right? Voters went to the polls, and the state ended up uh, having many different races go more liberal than conservative than in years past. 
I would point out that since Donald Trump was elected president, liberals have actually won three of the four seats and one of the other races that the uh, conservatives won was actually a swing justice. So we've had a complete um, shift in the Wisconsin Supreme Court over the last several years, and this was just the final this tipping is, yeah. point that gave liberals control. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah. Matt, Matt DeFore, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you.